The Chronicles of Harvey and Smudge. Sack Race. Come on, Smudge, get your act together, said Harvey, as Smudge came out of his back door to find Harvey in the field at the back of the house, laying out a line of pillowcases in front of the ever-confused sheep. Whatever are you doing, Harv? Does your dad know you have all of that bedding laid out on the grass? Smudge, I'll sort that out later. Wash number two, I think. Now, before we go for our walk, we're going to have a sack race. A sack race? Whatever do you mean? Once again, Smudge, my very best friend, you really need to keep up with current eclairs. It's all over the news. Russian Sun Hat has sacked that not-him tax pay after an intense internal investigation, which sounds very painful to me, indeed. Has the sack race been reinstated into the Olympics then, half, and that's why you're practising? Uh, you're confusing me, Smudge. Oh yes, didn't you know the sack race was part of the Olympic Games in 1904? Well, no, I didn't know that, smarty pants. This sack race is my meteor for what's happening in the government at the moment. Tell me more, Harv. Well, Smudge, they have these intense internal investigations going on everywhere. Gavin Williams and his son, they went recently. They are still looking into the bullying of Domino Rage. And I understand Doris has sold the BBC for £800,000. I can't believe that amazing institution is not worth more than that, Smudge. Surely they can't have many more ministers to, left to sack half. I've heard they're doing a recruitment drive for MP, Smudge. Yes, I understand they are specifically targeting three main sectors. Hedge fund managers... I think they're looking for the sorcerer's apprentice there, Smudge. Also, ventriloquists, as they say what they're told to say. And the third category are circus performers. They're all a bunch of clowns. I think so much of this is a distraction tactic, Harv. Pray entitle me further, my elegant friend. Well, Harv, with this all going on, these strikes and disputes are happening and they've moved off the front pages. The cost of living crisis, companies going out of business. Did you know that we make less cars here than in 1956, Harv? And of course, all of the crisis in the NHS is overshadowed by these distractions. Oh, you're right, Smudge. Even Bob Stewart called the sky the other day and said he had never seen the country in such a bad state and, and, and asked for a change of, very naughty word, government. Yes, I heard that half and he even offered to pay for some people to have scans, which was nice of him. Oh, very nice indeed, Smudge. And I do love some of his songs, don't you? I am sending, I am sending my friend Smudge around the bend. <laughs> Many a true word said in jest, Harv. Are we back to the circus performers, Smudge? And no, Harv, what I mean is that words are written in different ways to get a point across. Could you give me an example of that, Smudge? Well, Harv, for instance, so many things have been written in songs over the years that say so much if we really listen. A song like War, What Is It Good For? Absolutely Nothing, Say It Again by Edwin Starr. And Get Up, Stand Up by Bob Marley where he sang, you can fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all of the time. And now you see the light, you stand up for your rights. Oh, they're good ones, Smudge. Yes, one of my favouritists is by that Beatle, John Lemon, who sang, imagine no possessions, I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger, a brotherhood of man. Now, I think they were also a pop group.
smudge. I've tried very hard to forget that half. So smudge, do you think I'm sexy? Or have I just got hot legs?